Welcome to my shop. Today um, I have to set aside my painting project because Chris, the guy I borrowed the mold from, wants his molds back and I want to build another one of these airplanes from the original molds. So today I figured I would show you how to mold balsa wood. And it's relatively simple. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is select your wood. You want to select wood with nice straight grain and that's fairly flexible. That'll bend easy without cracking. So it has to be soft. So what I've done is, is I've taken a straight edge and I took my stripper and I ran along the straight edge and I've trued up all the edges on these pieces of wood. Now normally most of the guys have been just molding one single piece of 332nd and that's all well and good except that it does at, at the uh, bulkheads it shows a starved horse look so in order to get around that I'm going to be molding two pieces of 16th over this mold buck glued together with white glue. You give up a little bit, maybe uh, three grams or four grams in weight savings, but <clears throat> I believe for aesthetics it's more pleasing to me. So in order to glue these pieces of wood together, I've got, I'm working on a glass table here. And uh, as I've stated, the, the edges have all been trued up. And we're going to want to glue these together with CA. Now, <clears throat> what I do is I, I take this uh, piece and I pull them together. And then I tack it with a drop of CA. Of course, the bottle is uh, clogged. Somebody got to figure out how to make an anti clog bottle. So we tack it together there in one spot, come down about three inches in another spot, and come down a little more. We're just tacking this together because I want good, strong, tight joints. Wood together on your trued up surfaces, you want to get them started by tacking them together. We're doing this on wax paper. You don't want to uh, glue your piece to the bench. Then I take a piece of tape and you want to run it around your fingers because we're gonna we're going to uh, rub the CA into this crack so right along the seam there come down uh, about eight inches at a time and then rub the uh, CA into the crack now we have to do this twice where on 332nd you would only have to do it once because you're not laminating the pieces together. Now if you had some real good 8th inch you probably could do it with 8 could mold with 8th inch. I've never tried it but just this steam Steam will uh, 
bend any wood. I'm sure eighth inch would mold to get it wet enough and soak long enough. So that's how I, I do the uh, gluing together of the sheeting. That's one, one sheet, one set. Then I take a uh, 80 grit on a T-bar and clean it up. The only reason why we're doing this is we're going to be laminating the two pieces together and you don't want any bumps in it. And if it makes it a little thinner, that's okay because we're going to end up with an eighth of an inch anyway. Now, <clears throat> the only drawback to doing it this way is that, that the sheeting does end up getting glued to the wax paper. And I'm sure there's some other type of material that wouldn't glue the sheeting, but I don't have any. <laughs> Teflon. So this was uh, just for the sake of the video here. I took that sheet off. Otherwise, I would uh, do the other side. But anyway, you want to clean up all the wax paper and all the joints. And you want to make sure that you use this side is the outside. Because you forced the wood onto the glass, this side has no imperfections. It's, it's flat. Now, as I've told some people, any sanding you're going to do, do here. You don't want to sand it after it's molded. Because that's what will end up with a star parts look. So now, that's sanded with 80 grit. I come back with 220. Or 320. And we'll clean it and face it off and make it nice. So this is the outside. We'll make a pen mark. That way we know this is the uh, glue side. I'll put a G on it for glue. And uh, we're going to run it, <coughs> run a line down the center. An approximate line because that's uh, we're going to have to measure and cut this piece. Now, when I'm doing this, I like to find the side that's the most bendable, and the most bendable goes to the back because that's where the tightest turn is. So, this is the, the back. And this is the front. So the next thing you do is get a dressmaker's tape. I've already cut this to length, so there's no need to uh, to do that. But we're going to take the mold buck, and uh, I've done in the past some videos on mold making. So we won't be going into that on this time. But you want to take the tape and measure around how wide a piece we need. We need a piece that's uh, four and three quarters. So we're going to come out two and three eighths on each side of this line. Two. And three eighths and make a tick mark four and three quarter make a tick mark and on the tail end of the mold buck
two and a half. So one and a quarter on each side of the line. And this is our <coughs> first part of the prepared skin. Now this this method comes in handy. One when you when you like a or want a light airplane. And two when you just can't get a light block. So this is our first piece. Now I got to tell you, this piece is the inside piece. And the reason why it's the inside piece is, is the next piece has to be wider because we're going, it's called, it's for bend allowance because we're adding a sixteenth all the way around. So what I normally do is I just cut it a quarter inch bigger and then trim off the excess after the uh, mold or after the piece dries to make it right. So let's do the uh, exercise one more time. So this is the wide one here. This is the narrow on this side. So we don't want the seams to overlap. So what should do? that would put them overlapping there. Let me uh, take this up and sand it off. Perfect. Okay, this is the outside. I said the glue goes there, but it's not true. The glue goes on this one here. So we'll G L U E here. <laughs> so we don't want them to overlap. The joints so I think that's gonna be about it right there <coughs> so we're gonna cut this about a quarter of an inch bigger 316 we're not building watches so it doesn't much matter and that allows for the bend allowance inside side so now after I get this cut we'll go ahead and soak these in ultra hot water for oh, about 15 minutes and we'll come back and I'll show you how I wrap them up. And then the appropriate amount of time, whatever it takes for the glue to dry, probably three, four hours, and then we'll unwrap it. So here are your two skins. This is the inside. This is the glue side or the outside. And we're going to bend these around this buck and wrap them up. So we'll be back when I get the um, when I get the uh, 
wood soaked. Okay, I've removed the uh, the wood from the water, and it's pretty soaking wet. And there's really no need for all that water. It only takes longer for it to dry out. So get yourself a paper towel and more or less dry it off. But, you know, like I said, there's no need for all that for all that water. And you remember I already marked it where the glue went because this is the bigger one because it has to go around the outside of the uh, smaller one that's cut to the exact same size. So what I do is, is uh, take my piece, I get my tight bond glue. Now this, uh, this is depending on how heavy the piece ends up, is how much glue you put on and how much you take off. So we've kind of spread it around there. It doesn't take much glue. Make sure it's all covered. Now if you look, it's puddling. That's too much glue. We're making, we're not making a, a a wood lathe turned bowl so I don't need all that glue so let's take some of it off trowel it off whatever it will stick So now I'm going to center this piece up. We got to make sure our line is for the inside. And you don't, I'm going to tack it, but you don't want to tack on the outer edges, you want to tack on the end, on the center line right there. So I'll get some CA and we'll put a drop there. And that's just to hold it so that it doesn't move while it's drying. Try to keep it straight. I got a little glue on the outside there. So I want to. I don't want to glue the bandages, so we're going to get a paper towel and wrap that up. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have somebody to help you, you can have them hold the mold buck. Or you can do like I've done here, and I put it in the uh, a drill press vise. And you want to take this piece of wood to center the center line right on the top of the uh, piece, front and rear. No big deal. So I, I get an ace bandage. started here and we want to make sure that we're keeping it straight on the buck. And try to have the ace bandage lay down flat. You don't have to but it just makes even pressure all the way around it. And I think maybe it's ridiculous but I think it makes a better job. Al Rave, he uses bed sheets. You could probably use anything. This particular part will not be ready to unmold for, I would say, at least three hours, maybe longer, depending on how the glue dries. This way works extremely well for these turtle decks, bottom blocks. It's, it's 
not exactly the light. It's the 332nd way or molding one piece of 16th would be actually lighter. But as I stated, if you don't want the starved horse look, this laminated way is probably the way to go. I'm doing live shows. I, I've been doing them every night at 9 o'clock. More and more people are coming in. If you subscribe to my channel, go on my Google Plus page, you'll be notified when those live shows start. It's uh, not a, an instructional type show. It's more or less a building sec session where the guys can just sit around and we can work on our things together and kind of discuss back and forth. And it's fun. So that is straight for molding. We didn't have to make any cuts to relieve for any compound pressure or whatever on the next clip. I will uh, put together a compound molding tutorial. This method lighter, but it's stronger than a block. The bulkheads go in afterwards. Here I didn't quite start the mold or the uh, bandage far enough ahead, probably a quarter inch. You can pull it down with a piece of tape without a problem. And at this point, it would work either way without doing this. But. I'm doing this for video's sake. I might as well make it perfect. The finished product. Uh, obviously, you know, we'll be waiting several hours before the mold is done. I'm going to go ahead and edit up this video and load it up. Uh, the next video will be the compound molding where we do this. It has it has an angle around this way and around this way so you have to relieve this and I'll show you the compound molding. And it works it works on ever whatever compound shape that you may have. You could molding is just it's amazing. You know, I, I would have never thought of it on my own. I owe a lot of I give a lot of credit to Bob Hunt and Bill Warridge for uh, more or less introducing me to the molding situation. And but I, I do know that it's been around forever but uh, make sure you like subscribe and share my videos and if you're not a member of stunt hanger click on the banner you see down below it'll take you right to the form use your real first and last name and a valid email address you're going to have to check your email it takes me a, a little bit of time to get around to it we have our stunt hanger shirts going out. They're yellow. They're a Gildan yellow pocket t-shirt. And they have a in memory to Don Schultz on the back. It's a airplane that cartoon that he drew for Al Rave. It's an iconic cartoon. It took uh, quite a bit of time to digitize it and get it ready 
to go and I have printed them one other time but I thought we'd bring this back on uh, Don's passing so appreciate you coming by my shop spending some time with me I'm trying to uh, bring the stunt community closer together so make sure you like subscribe share tell your friends till I see you again fair winds tie line see ya